Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Legit. I hope all you fine folk are staying well, keeping safe and enjoying these long summer days of riding. The video I'm about to show you today was filmed in Longsight, Greater Manchester. Now, a quick warning, some of the scenes in this are going to be slightly shocking. You will be furious by the end of it. And of course, we're going to talk about it. So enjoy the video and I'll catch you on the other end. Now, I can guess how you guys are going to be feeling. Now, add on top of that the fact there is a police station, Longsight police station, less than two minutes drive down that road that this robbery was attempted on. Now, it's pretty fair to say police could have been there within two to three minutes and prevented this guy's bike from being stolen, trashed on the floor like it was. You know, that's his livelihood. He, he uses that bike to do deliveries, pay his wage, support his family, and so on. But no one out of the multiple people who stood around, there were four guys, in a shop standing out all uh, all who worked there standing out watching it the guy in the car filming you know grown adult passers by standing and staring people in cars just doing nothing and watching the likes of you and i that boils 
our blood to the point where I would certainly not stand by and let that happen on my watch. I would be going in there trying to help this guy as much as I can. He is heavily outnumbered, but he's standing his ground and these thieves see that and that stops their mentality from thinking that they're an unbreakable gang. No one's going to stop them. They can do what they want. This guy's standing up to them. He's taking on the biggest ones and he's swinging his lock around. He's smacking and making contact with their helmets. There's a couple of times in that clip where you hear a really loud that's because the lock on his chain is smacking these guys around their helmets, which is enough for some of them to decide they've left the oven on and run home as quick as they can. The important things to take away from this is that he had access to a self-defense implement. Even though he was doing his job, he'd just come out of a restaurant, going back to his bike. This was the time they exploited the bike being on its own and tried to take it. He still had something on him which he could defend himself and his property with. Within seconds, it was evident this guy wasn't gonna give up without a fight and that quickly reduced the gang's force monopoly into evaporating into thin air. Another point I'd like to raise is that he was so observant of his surroundings he's constantly looking around up and down the pavement along the street and he positions himself with his back against a building which you may think could be a disadvantage but at least he knows there's going to be no one coming from behind him so all of his threats are coming from in the front. It's a lot easier to assess your threat and deal with it when you can see all of them. There's no one sneaking up behind you. No one's going to knock you out with a pole. Although he is in mid-fight with one of the attackers, he sees his bike starting to be pushed away and so prioritizes that over one of the thieves. Now that again is a very good point. Do not get red mist. Do not zero in on one attacker just because he's in front of you. You've always got to be seeing what all of them are doing because if the whole point of you defending and fighting these guys is to stop them from stealing your bike, you've got to keep eyes on it. We see as soon as the bike goes down, the thieves pretty much give up, although one does stick around to try and torment the guy to see if he's going to give in. By this point, the bike's laid down in the middle of the street now, so there are a lot more witnesses who now can be calling police and also be rendering assistance. So taking the fight to the middle of the street and dropping the bike there makes it harder for them to pick up and take away, but also increases the chances the thieves are going to get seen. They're going to get struck by someone, so as soon as it goes to the middle of the road, the risk to them adds up massively. From parks on the side of the road, where they've got relative cover behind parked cars they're now exposed in the open. So what he does next is good. His follow-up actions are to monitor the threats. He keeps eyes on that one guy at the end of the street who seems to be one of the predominantly aggressive and violent males of this group. He also does keep eyes on the accomplices which are the opposite end. So now he is in a disadvantage. He originally had the advantage of having a wall behind him so he knew no one was behind him. Now he's in the middle of the street. He can get attacked from multiple angles. So you know the threat has also raised for him too. What he should also be doing as soon as this guy starts driving off is check for injuries you know they they may have had hammers claws god knows what else but it may have been a knife in there he unbeknownst to him could have been stabbed and could be leaking out blood so he really would have to then consider hold on a second let me check for injuries now let's call the police let's speak to witnesses and secure my bike now guys as always i would love to know what your thoughts on this video are was he brave was he stupid let me know down in those comments below what would you have done differently i always love to hear and on that note thank you so much for watching you guys have been awesome i've been legit i'll see you in the next one